Uh, welcome, adventurers, to the first of what will be probably many D&D highlight videos here on Forgebreaker, where we're going to start recapping the action that took place and give you a peek into all of our campaigns and not just give you little snippets with no information about it. Uh, if you're new here to our channel, be sure to check out all of our playlists, uh, which contain almost every single session that we've had here, uh, save for a handful from the Ascension. Uh, but with that, uh, let's actually jump right into our first session with the Ascension. Uh, in session 38, protecting the Sword Coast, the Fae team found themselves with a boatload of money and nowhere to really spend it. Uh, Kaylin, opening the spell scroll case, uh, would actually find a map of the entire northern portion of the Sword Coast, uh, where it would allow her to pick a location and once per day could teleport to any location that she had chosen. Uh, with that, the party decided to head to Neverwinter, uh, began to spend some of their money and put some of it back into savings. Uh, from there, they would rest up uh, within the city and begin to prepare for a journey north, uh, north of the spine of the world. Uh, it was here that our party would find a cavern beneath all of the snow and ice that they found around them uh, and begin their descent down into this cavern. Uh, Mark and Orr would turn and take notice of a yeti and then notice several yeti. Uh, these powerful beasts would eventually shut down the Fate Team's ranger, Aelion, which led us to this week's highlight. So, now it's the yeti's turn. Now this one, not liking that, especially being attacked by Aelion, is going to look down at him and also do another chilling gaze. Uh, con save. Uh, I get the plus three, right? In the aura. Uh, and... Oof. Alright. Uh, you take eight cold damage and you are paralyzed. Uh, Aelion, you're paralyzed. Go ahead and give me another con save at the end of your turn. Uh, <laughs> Oof. Still oh, paralyzed. come on. That oh, is unfortunate. Come on. <laughs> I rolled so bad today. Okay. That is awful. Alright, don't take damage again, but you are... So we go back to Aelion, who's still frozen. Another con save. Seven... Eight, nine, two, eleven, twelve. <laughs> Still frozen. Again. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> oh, poor Alien. Oh. Alien's All having right. a great night, by the way. He's having a just cannot get rolls. You need to change your color on your little token down there, or your little yeah. avatar. Alien, buddy. Please make well, the con save. Uh, let's, let's see. Do it. Uh, 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 no. Oh, come on. <laughs> how? Uh, how? It seems so you have impossible. a plus six. How? Right. I, uh, I, haven't, plus I, haven't eight. A, I haven't rolled above a three. Yeah, three has been his highest roll in these. God. That's the highest one I've had so far. With an 11, unfortunately. <laughs> still not enough. You are still paralyzed. Ugh. We might hit the minute mark before you save. True, true. Mark and or. Okay. Uh, here's the refresh for the upcoming round. So, 13. Is that the plus two? Version? Yep. Yep, so 15 total. Uh, and Markinor is going to look over at Aelion, who is just standing there, and say, I swear to Tyr, if you don't do something, I'm going to strangle you and cast Lesser Restoration to get rid of the Paralyzed effect. <laughs> and you do so. <laughs> <laughs> Wowie. <laughs> wow, freaking wee. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, All right, that's my yeah. turn. <laughs> All right, so just seeing Aelion just slowly this ice forming all over his body as he just struggles against it but cannot break free of it. Uh, I just imagine, like, your Illidan form is in summer right now, so you just fucking hate the cold. <laughs> that's what's causing all this. All right, so Markador restores you, the ice melts away as you feel your body able to be moved again. 
Uh, we turn our attention now uh, to Tyranny of Dragons, as the Scales of Justice have just returned to the city of Waterdeep. In Session 51, Revenge and Retribution, the Scales made their way uh, through the city to the heraldry of the people. Uh, most people now beginning to recognize him, and their recognition is going far beyond just the commoners uh, and the nobles as well. Um, but even the vendors and the shops uh, all throughout the city, everybody is taking notice of them. Uh, as they begin to walk around, uh, each kind of going their separate way, uh, some spending money, some seeking out points of interest, uh, one particular person uh, choosing to go and visit a uh, temple uh, dedicated to uh their god uh, at which point everybody would eventually make their way back uh, to the home or the setting of the scales of justice uh, and begin to make plans uh, plans to visit perhaps skyreach castle uh, which was somehow or for some reason hovering over the city of waterdeep uh, while there, uh, they begin to make other plans and arrangements as well, attempting to let the council know they had information to give to them and that their task was completed. Uh, however, as they got back to their home and were making these plans, they were greeted by a member of the Zentarum. Uh, it would seem that word travels a lot faster now, especially when you're as popular as the scales are. Uh, and the news that the scales cleared out the uh, Zonthal's Tower uh, would be of interest to the Zentarum. Uh, wanting to purchase the tower from the new owners, the Scales felt that it was time to bring their manager, Joe Gath, in uh, and make him an official member of the Scales of Justice. Uh, uh, Stone Skull's going to stand up and walk over towards the door and uh, give a loud whistle trying to get Joe to come back here. Okay. Uh, as you do so, your whistle echoing through. Uh, it takes a few minutes, but then you hear this kind of panting sound and you see Joe th opening, or Joe rather, opening the door as he looks in. Uh, he says, um, I, I'm assuming that was for me. Um, what, what can I help you with? Is everything all right? Uh, come have a seat. That he nods. You see him kind of ring, you know, wringing his hands as he moves over and sits down. Um, hope I didn't offend y'all. It wasn't my intention uh, to, to do anything of the sort. Uh, he immediately reaches to his side, pulls the, the dagger out, places it uh, in front of Joe and says, This is for everything that you do here. You are as much of the scales as we are. And with that, we need your guidance to make sure we're making the right choice here. That you see Joe initially looking at the dagger a bit, you know, hesitantly, and then seeing it set down, he looks at it and kind of scrunches his eyes, looking back and forth, all of you staring at him. He says, I don't know what to say. Um, thank you. Uh, he picks up the dagger, kind of looking at it, holding it in both his hands, kind of ceremoniously. I says, uh, of, of course, any anything I can help y'all with, I'm happy to do so. Just just ask. We, uh, being a member of, you know, being a, a scale, a member of the scales, um, you also provide an unbiased input, um, especially when it comes to breaking kind of a tie here um we've been approached um, after having uh dispatched all the cultists from xanthal's tower um been approached by the, the zentarum with an offer to purchase it from us uh promising aid not only monetarily but if i remember correctly also you know informationally as an ally well what do you think that he thinks for a moment and kind of asks for details uh, I assume you're telling him they're offering money and stuff for the oh, tower yeah. for sure yeah I mean open transparency with Joe you know 
It's uh, yeah, he's he's I, I don't know. He seems a, a valuable member of the team, if nothing else. And you know, giving imagine him giving us honest feedback. You know. Um, with that, Joe seems to think for a few moments and looks back up and he says, I, I don't know much about the Zentarum. I've heard of them, of course, mercenaries and such, but I, honestly, uh, if you own a place and you, you want to sell it, if the price is right, then I'd, I'd go for it. Money's always good. Uh, you know, places can fall apart or be attacked or who knows. Just like you captured it, it could be captured from you one day. Uh, who knows? Money will be there until you spin it. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of what else he would say. Uh, he says, honestly, I, I can't speak too much of whether you should or shouldn't do it. Um, I just know that back in the trade world where I'm from, um, there's a lot of People of business and such that I, I grew up with, and one thing I learned is that you always haggle, always try to get as much as you can out of the deal. And if it truly is a Zentarum that you're working with and dealing with, uh, I'd try to get as much as you could out of them. Should be able to afford it, right? <laughs> uh, that was the general consensus. So, um, what? Well, Thank you, and stop saying yours, ours, okay? Daddy kind of nods, says, of course, sorry, I'm, from humble beginnings, I, I apologize, this is all very, um, new to me. So, uh, you'll get used to it. <laughs> we gotta look around, we all were too. Or just, we all were. <laughs> um... And then, you know, just kind of nod, you know, and say, you know, you can get back to whatever you need to. We won't take up any more of your time. Then he nods and still picking up the dagger and still kind of holding it in two hands, kind of awkwardly he nods again, says, uh, of course, it's it's still real busy in there. Uh, but if you need anything, just just holler. I'll take care of you. Say, uh, hey, Stone's Cold, did you tell him what's made out of? No. I mean, can he tell? I mean... It's fairly obvious. This is a big ass tooth. Yeah, yeah, like okay, it's cool. in the shape to make sure. of the tooth. I didn't yeah. know if it was like the tooth that was ground down, or if it was like yeah, in the shape. Okay. Oh no, yeah, it's still like in the shape. It's just narrowed and into like uh, the edge of a blade, basically. With that, right, Joe uh, bows to all y'all and zooms back out, heading briskly back to the bar. I like that guy. Yeah, as long as the um, guests don't try to kill him, should be fine. Make sure that should anything happen to us, he's the one that takes care of this. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe make it official, make it his. Yeah, I like, I'm gonna approach Joe and just say, Joe, I'm gonna need a favor from you. All right, you've been doing an awful great job, but there's a couple things I want to discuss with you, if you're uh, amenable to that. That Joe looks at you and kind of nods, uh, still that kind of sheepish, wide-eyed look on his face that he normally has when speaking to any of you. Uh, he says, oh, I'm happy to help. Anything I'm, you know, capable of doing, uh, of course I'll do. Uh, oh, y'all a lot for giving me this opportunity, of course. So, uh, yeah, sure, I can I can hear you out. All right, I say, number one, that. And I point at his face. Stop that. You're one of us now. I don't need you looking up to me or anything like that. Just treat me like, you know, your sister. You got a sister? Joe, do you have relatives? Uh, does Joe have relatives? Instant backstory, Havoc. <clears throat> yeah, really. Yeah, what do you mean you didn't think this through? <laughs> Just Listen. add water. <laughs> Just <laughs> add water. <laughs> I, mean, I could do Joe, one of those real quick. Exactly. How much do you weigh? <laughs> what is your exact weight? What are your yeah, measurements exactly. so we can get you a set of armor, okay? Yeah, yeah. so oh, we need I, them right uh, now. <laughs> yeah, so I, I start with that and I tell him to, like, you know, not be so religious about addressing at least me, but probably everyone. 
uh, a slap. Uh, next for our adventurers in Amongst the Giants, they continued to search for the missing giant relics uh, told to them by the Eye of the Allfather and Harshnog. Uh, in session 26, The Moral Dilemma, our party confronted their own demons in a way after slaughtering uh, a group of tribals that were protecting a relic on the spirit mound of one stone. Kalidus would have issue with the way that the situation was handled, confronting Hopper and Alakul about it in uh, a kind of passive way at first, before eventually just throwing it all out there. Uh, Kalidus would then inform the party that from now on, uh, he will attempt to lead and uh, make a more diplomatic approach uh, to these tribals before turning on any of the people. The party would arrive at Bowrun as well and begin their descent into the cavern. Finding several members of the Black Lion tribe, Kalidus would go and attempt to convince them that they mean them no harm. After a bit of discussion, uh, they were able to do so, and given the approval by the shaman of the tribe, the party was given permission to head south towards their altar. Uh, where they were also given the, the approval to search around but not disturb or harm the altar that remained down there. However, in their search for this relic that was actually buried well beneath the ground, uh, Evendor would end up hearing the sound of flapping wings off in the distance. Uh, this would lead Kalidus to turn around to Icarius, casting uh, daylight on him, and sending him north, giving us this highlight for the week. Sometimes evil travels with us, and she looks to Para. <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn around and say, if you don't mind, run as fast as you can to the north end of the cavern and back, and... See if you see anything, and as I'm saying that, I'll uh, place my hand on his chest and cast Daylight. Good. That'll ensure that whatever's whatever's I feel like bait down on him. <laughs> you were one thousand. Literally became bait. bait. <laughs> <laughs> literally just became bait. We dub the dragon bait. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna take off running. I'm gonna yeah, get a couple of arrows running. ready. I take off running, but that doesn't mean I'm coming back. He's got 60-60 now, so... Oh, oh, gonna, look at that illumination! We're gonna see this fucking light ball just running down the hall of the cave. Every single person winces and covers their eyes like someone walking into a dark room it's, that someone just flicks the light on. It's just that Spongebob um, meme. Do I see anything yeah, yet? I don't think so. I don't know, I'm not... I gotta look at the thing, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, do you? God, no. you're supposed to know these things. Do I hear anything yet? No, you're running, so your footsteps are louder than the flapping that Evandor heard. I'm, I'm a monk. They're light footsteps. Light-ish. All right. I'm gonna climb the wall, or is this one a down wall? I think it's, it's yeah, it's wall. the same thing. It's a down. So okay. You guys went up to get to the the precipice here. Uh, rest of you, what are you doing? Eat. Watching. Honestly, I'm, I'm gonna just blast him. prepared if there's anything within rank. Right. God, I'm, this is so fucking big. I'm gonna follow him because I know if I have to shoot something that I'm gonna need to see it, so. I'm gonna just Eldred keep a spear. protective position around Nevender. I'm pretty sure Alakul can protect Kalidus from the crazy tribal we're leaving at our backs. I, w I will stay with Kalidus. Realizing that any kind of ranged fight is uh, not good for me. You know, Carius, it occurs to me that we might be able to draw it out if we hobbled you in some way. Hobbled me? Yeah, I'm just going to start shooting at your feet. Nope. Nope. It'll be 45 <laughs> more feet. Uh... Carries, give me a perception check. You 
are starting to hear the sound of wings as well but not one set of wings oh I'm running back no that's that's all the news they need <laughs> no there's a lot of stuff <laughs> back there I'm not going over there no you find it there, there's a bunch it's not just something it's it's a bunch of somethings did you let, see me, it? let me up, move. No, I didn't see it. <laughs> you didn't Keep know what your them. job was. <laughs> nope. You can come with me. What do you think I was doing? Bit. A hundred feet back there? <laughs> I have a ranged All right. weapon. Alright, I'm, I'm going 45 feet further. He died the way he lived, running away. I'm just waiting for the scream. <laughs> Oh yes, there is also Yellow Tiger and Blue Tiger. We're not good at names. <laughs> and Pink Tiger. Fucking Looking at that map, tigers. I'm kind of uh, yeah, realizing we... those There's are skeletons, of... guys. <laughs> oh, I think these are trees. Yeah, why? Are there no, trees no. in this? This. That's the, this. the rope. This oh, that's the rope. This is the rope that you guys took down. Oh, this it's not a convenient. It's not a complete conveniently placed skeleton. Okay. No. Um, I want to do another listen here. I'm gonna stop and listen for a second. Still hear the flapping, uh, and then after a few moments, you hear what sounds like pretty large footfalls, uh, as the flapping of one of the beasts stops. Huh. You do a great buddy. <laughs> so far. You should have heard stomping. Boy, Boy Evander, I hope so they don't get so far so away. It, you yeah, you them. hear of like a, a large-ish kind of beast landing. Upper at that point, it's their problem. That's fair. They're getting kind of... Why is he stopped? He oh. told him to run to the other end of the cavern. <laughs> Okay. He hasn't reached there yet. He's All right, there I'm, yet. I'm going forward, Paris. Please don't let me die. Uh -oh. Please don't Please let don't me die. die. You, uh, die. Uh, you, you are asking. Oh, you are asking um, the wrong party oh. member. For this. As you look up, uh, and you I go see, for the rope. <laughs> you see a monstrosity, and not just one, but three of them in front of you. Uh, the one in the center landing on the ground, crawling around on what appears oh. to be the body of a tiger and the head of a very deformed man and very large wings. Uh, it looks in your direction and kind of snarls a bit and lets out a shout that almost sounds like an elephant call as it shouts in your direction. Um, do I recognize these? Uh, you give me... An... You know these as Manticore. And we're running. That's all they needed <laughs> to know. Hi, <laughs> Paris. We, we, oh, got, we gotta go. Lastly, we said goodbye to the Dragon Heist module with our Stealing Dragons campaign. Uh, in session 19, the heist of a lifetime, our party awoke the morning after speaking with the various factions and headed towards the Pink Flump, a small theater where the Stone of Galore uh, had informed Kai that a hidden passageway would reside and lead us to the Vault of Dragons. Uh, after a bit of searching, the party would find the entryway, uh, with Viz wandering around one of the dressing rooms and stomping, finding uh, a very large wooden door uh, blocking the way. Um, Talia would open the door, leading us down a very long flight of stairways uh, towards two very large stone doors, uh, where Kai would begin to become one of the keys by getting himself drunk. Uh, after he did so, uh, hearing that one of the keys had unlocked, uh, Nim would step forward, unlocking his, followed by Viz doing the same exact thing. As the door swung wide, uh, the party would enter into the top level of the vault and look around, finding several doors, uh, leading them to a riddle of what was the most important thing to a dwarf. Uh, the party would select clan, uh, heading up to the far northwest and follow it uh, before stepping uh, 
through into the entryway and finding a mural that was standing on the, the far wall. They would walk past to head upstairs, eventually making their way towards the main vault, where they would finally be face to face with the gold dragon, or at least the form he had taken, a dwarf by the name of Barak Klanghammer. Looking not to die to this ancient dragon, the party would begin discussions with it, uh, bringing Lyral Silverhand into the fold, giving us this clip. Um, as you're looking over to the western alcove back behind um, Barak Klinghammer, uh, you see this just huge mound of gold and jewels and such. Uh, with that, as you're asking Viz, he kind of turns around and says, uh, Yes, I've seen it. See it every day, I suppose. Oh, can, can we have it to give it back to the people it was stolen from? Please? No. Oh, but is that is that the stolen gold that uh, the open previous open lord never ember embezzled from all the innocent people of Waterdeep? That is that it? Kind of frowns, looking at you. I have not heard of any stolen gold and such. This was brought here, and I was asked to guard it. I don't know what you're talking about. By who? How is there sunlight in here? Oh, there's some interesting magic in play. The, my ancestors were quite ingenious, really. It looks like sunlight, but it's actually crystals imbued with permanent magic. Yes, very interesting, really. Beautiful. Looks quite nice, I think, honestly. I imagine if you've been down here a long time, it's nice to still have sunlight. Yes, it's nice. I like being underground, though, so, you know, having both best of both worlds, I suppose, is quite nice. Have you been lonely down here all by yourself? Daddy kind of looks around. Not really, no. I've always been a solitude person myself, so the quiet has been nice. I've had plenty of time to work on my my books and my thoughts and such and not have any disturbances. I do get adventurers or uh, <clears throat> visitors from time to time, I suppose. Oh, <clears throat> when was the last time someone visited you? Oh, some time ago. Maybe a few years, possibly. Okay. Risk is going to say to him in Draconic and ask uh what kind of books do you like to write? Uh, he turns his head to you and in very fluent and flowing draconic, he says, those about dragons, usually. Interesting. Have you ever, ever met a dragon? I'm a follower of Bahamut and I'm interested in their histories and their stories. As you say you're a follower of Bahamut, he <clears throat> looks at you kind of raising an eyebrow. He says, oh, are you now? Still answering in Draconic. As well, if you are, then... Feel that you know more about this place than you're letting on. I'm not a very intelligent man. I don't know very many things. Kai will lean forward from the wall and in Draconic say, My friend may not know, but I do. Is this what With you guys that. felt like when I was reading the runes and you couldn't read anything? <laughs> uh, with that, you see Barak's head kind of slanting over towards you, Kai, and he kind of addresses, looking over the group, and he responds in common. What are you doing here? Uh, Kai replies also in common. Uh, we have come to relinquish you of your duties. Your services are no longer longer required here. You are not the ones who gave me this duty. You're Regardless absolutely of... correct. Lord Never Ember was the one that gave you this duty, and he is no longer in power, possibly even dead. Prove it. 
Very well. Uh, Kai will turn back to the others and kind of motion <clears throat> for them to step forward, uh, looking to address Lural. As you do so, you see Lural, Jalister, and Maloon moving forward, and Jalister kind of leans forward and says, Oh, that's an interesting looking dwarf you have there. What's going on here? Uh, Kai will turn to Laurel and uh, attempt to speak with her. What was the uh, title she wishes to be called by? Your Grace. Laurel, Your Grace, whatever. Uh, Kai will clear his throat for a second and say, uh, Your Grace, uh, could we trouble you to speak with uh, Sir Barak here uh, and inform him of your status as the open lord of Waterdeep? and that Lord Never Ember is no longer in power. As it appears, he has been given specific orders and is going to follow them. As you say that, you say they are all looking at you. Uh, make an insight check. Uh, as you do so, you see her moving forward very calmly and such, not talking to you directly, letting Jalister, you know, come out and talk to you first. And as you turn to her, she looks at you a very calm look and across her face, very calm eyes. And as you request this of her, she has a knowledge of, uh, or a bit of look of understanding and a acknowledgement as you do so. Uh, she just a very faint smile as she nods her head. Uh, kind of ingredients and she steps forward as she moves past the rest of you she stands up right next to this dwarf uh, looking down at him and kind of smiles and greets him and says my name is Leal Silverhand I am the open lord of Waterdeep from what I've gathered from this conversation thus far is that you may have been led astray by the one who gave you this charge. From what I understand, Lord Dagult Neverember charged you with guarding this horde here, this sort of dragons. That money was taken from the good folk of Waterdeep, from the treasury, and put here so that he could reclaim at a later date, as he saw that he would be ousted, as he was, from Open Lord of Waterdeep. My friends and I would request that you uphold your honor and return, said Horde of Dragons, this gold that belongs to the people, to the people, and not keep it here selfishly to you. Dagult's own means, or your own, but I would expect one such a noble being as you would not want to do such a thing. As she concludes, you see Barak Clanghammer standing and listening to her, and there's a bit of confusion and reluctance that crosses his face over a few moments, and Seems to glance around, looking around. We just want to right a wrong. It was done. Looks over. It's well, I've... I do not like to think myself as... an enemy <clears throat> of the people. I've taken on this task at the behest of a friend. One that I thought had power and was not leading me awry. But if. Kind of looks over at Lairall, if what you say is true, and we've all heard of you, Silverhand, then this must be true. This is not meant for. Dagult or anyone else but for the people. 
seems to think for a few moments. Very well. I do not have it, as you said, in my honor to keep this to myself or to defend it if it does not, in fact, belong to the one who tasked me with this charge and who paid me to do so. So. My conditions do not cause a fuss. I would like to be able to leave Waterdeep with no duress, exit out of it because see him looking over, kind of still leaning onto the staff. He looks at it. Without this, it would be quite difficult for me to remain here. Is that how you were able to avoid the, the wards? And he looks over and kind of edges the staff over towards you and nods. He says, yes, this is the dragon staff of Agarion. Allows a dragon to break his ward and remain water deep. Without it, I would not be able to be here guarding this horde of dragons. Explains that he looks back over to Lairal. With my conditions be agreeable to you for me to exit and go back to my home after this duty has been completed. That Lyral looks over to the rest of you, kind of glancing among your number, looking for any kind of sign of agreeance or disagreeance. Kind Besides, could we, could we really stop him if we wanted to? I mean... <laughs> He, he seems he seems pretty agreeable. I'm I I think at this point we're kind of like yeah, oh, yeah yeah fine just leave yeah. yeah no we're good you won't kill us we're good. Oh, seeing all of you agreeing to the deal that has been made, uh, they're all nods back towards um, Barak Klinghammer. Cla- uh, um, nodding back to him says yes that will be very much agreeable we just seek out what is best for the city and what is best for its people my friends do not want to fight want any disagreements with you we simply want to right a wrong as Jimlin said with that you see Barak nodding says, very well with my duty relieved he turns around you see him Walking a bit across the ca- or the uh, the vault itself, he walks over to the middle, and amongst the middle of it, you see a bunch of gemstones. All of them pretty large, you know, not quite fist size, but a little bit smaller. There's a good hundred of them or so. He goes around and he kind of slowly reaches over, picking them up, taking them, putting them into his bag, going through them. Takes him about 15 minutes or so to go through them. Uh, after he gets done putting them all in there, he turns around, not walking over to the alcove with all the gold or anything. He walks back over to the group. He says, I have collected my payments for this endeavor. If there is nothing else you need of me, I will be departing then. And what happens to my charge is no longer my concern. I do have a request. It's not a it's not a demand. It's, it's simply a favor, if you wouldn't mind. Yes, follower of Bahamut's. What? There is a young dragon living in the bay outside Waterdeep. I think he would very much appreciate uh, a chat and just to uh, hear your tales of the city. I think it would mean a lot to him. Make a persuasion check. With advantage. Uh, that was just a uh, 25. Okay. As you say so, you see him thinking for a moment, moving forward, and as he does so, he reaches up and uh, as he's kind of passing you, rests his hand on his arm, and he looks up at you in his golden beard and hair and such kind of flowing as he looks up and a bit of a smile. He says, I think the golden dragon... Aronax will have a talk with this youngling you spoke of. May do him some good. I appreciate that. He's he's very young, a little naive, naive, but a uh, good-natured. Is is this hall big enough that it could hold like an actual dragon form? Uh. Oh 
网络。It looks like it would. Yeah. Okay. I I wanted to ask you、yes. if you'll change. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um. Before you before you go, could I make a request as well? Yes. I've never seen an an ancient dragon like yourself. As you say that, he looks over and. Kind of scans the group, and you see his gaze kind of lingering on, lingering on Leral, who he's been speaking to for most of this conversation. You see her kind of lowering her head in assent. He nods back and says, "Well, not often. Many people get to see me, I suppose." He takes a few steps back away from you as he gets between two columns, kind of looking around and nods to himself. And you see him kind of crunching over a bit, and as he does so, his form begins to grow. You see the. Clothing and such beginning to rip apart as this gold scaly figure begins to appear, shooting up way、uh, <laughs> larger than the small dwarf that you saw. As you see an incredibly large—that's not big enough. That's big enough.、Uh, golden dragon standing above you as he looks down, his nostrils flaring as you can feel the heat of his breath blowing over all of you, and you all hear this voice kind of radiating your mind says, "Well." Will that suffice? Yes, little one. This is more a question for God. Can I? Can I go and pick、yeah. up the staff? Oh no! <laughs> staff vanished when he transformed. His clothes ripped, but the staff vanished.、Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks. 